Blank and Jeremy Branham. Blessing or stressing? With our guy Garrett. You follow him on Twitter at Texans Commenter. Houston stressing's everywhere, everywhere. Killing it on the uh, social media game. What are we blessing or stressing today, Garrett? Well, we got a lot. I'm going to try and get a mix of some positive and some some negative. But I got to start off with the hot topic, which is uh, Bobby Slovak's play calling. Uh, are we blessing or stressing his play calling? I know it's been a hot topic on the radio and, and social media. Um, I'm going to remain mildly blessed. I'm definitely not stressing nearly as much as a lot of people are. I understand the frustrations, but uh, there's a couple reasons why it's not super alarming to me. Two, uh, one is we played two really good defenses back-to-back weeks in the Bears and the Vikings. Um, another reason why, too, is the run game hasn't been very good at all. So it's kind of hard to set up the rest of your play calling based off of that. I know a lot of people think that, oh, he needs to throw the ball down the field. Like, well, you know, defenses are running too high safeties. We're forced to run it, and we can't run it. So, um, And really, the biggest issue as to why is because of the O-line uh, communication issues, obviously the penalties. We get stuck in third and longs for that. So I'm, I'm still blessing. Yeah, I, I think from my standpoint, what I'd add to that is it's week three. And the fact that you are still kind of learning the identity of your team. You're been without your best running backs, if you believe that that Pierce was number two. And the fact that, as we talked about earlier this week, that, you know, as you go through these situations, you had to ha- didn't have to deal with that until this game against the Vikings, that you tried to get back big chunks instead of taking what the defense was giving you when Flores was so dynamic in the way he was bringing things at you. Take the underneaths. Take what they're giving you. And then at a certain point, maybe that big chunk play will, will open up. Uh, this is one that I want to hedge because it's hard for me to say blessing about it, but I'm blessing it more than I'm stressing it. I think that Slowick is getting a lot of criticism that might be out of his control a bit. Like when I look at the offense and the issues with the offense, this isn't so much play calling. It's more protection. And I think that they're trying. Like there's many times they're keeping six or seven in pass protection and they're still losing. They're, they're still losing. So it's hard to call plays when your offensive line is getting manhandled and the Vikings are getting pressure anytime you want. So I'd love to hedge it, but I'll go stressing over, uh, or I'll go blessing over stressing. Okay. I like it. I mean, I guess some of the stuff too is Grenard getting, you know, paired up on a rookie tight end too. I mean, yeah, if he's seen that specifically, you can stress on that, but yeah, it's uh, not great. <laughs> but yeah, pass pro is definitely a big deal. But uh, next up, I got, um, are we blessing or stressing the fact that the Astros may potentially face AJ Hinch and the Tigers in the first round? Um, I think I'm stressing, man. I mean, the Tigers, I believe, are the hottest team in baseball since the All-Star break. They got some uh, great young pitching. And, you know, early on in the career of A.J. Hinch versus the Astros, it felt like he kind of had our number. I know this year, I believe, uh, we've, we've fared better. But uh, I don't know, man. It kind of gives me, uh, you know, some some scares there. So I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessing the fact that it, it, I don't care who they play. I think this isn't about who they play. This is about who they are. And if they come to the table and they bring their best lineup and they bring what they have on this roster, I think that, you know, whether you play Detroit or Minnesota or whoever the case may be, I'm going to feel pretty good about the Astros chances, no matter who their manager is. Cause you know, there's a good deal of time that now has passed between when AJ was here and who the players he knows he's done a hell of a job. And I think that it's a big accomplishment for them in itself just to get there. Whereas I think that with bigger fish to fry and with the veteran laden team that the Astros have, it, Jordan is the biggest concern. But if they're healthy, I'll take them against Detroit, no matter who their manager is. Yeah, I stress whoever the opponent is in the playoffs. I get a little scared of everybody. I'm a big softy. So I'm stressing it. Plus, like the storyline of this, like A.J. Hinch, back to his roots, the team that fired him, and then beats the dynasty as the Astros and closes the window on the dynasty forever. Plus, they have the AL Cy Young. Uh, honestly, I would be stressing all of these teams. Kansas City is very good. If Minnesota sneaks in, that means they got hot. If Seattle, Seattle's pitching staff scares me. So quite frankly, I'd be stressing all of them. But yeah, I'm stressing the Tigers and A.J. Hinch. Of course I am. And you could even argue that Tigers are kind of the Astros, you know, when we were kind of emerging too from rebuilding and on the up on the up and up. So, um, but yeah, next up for me, this one is going to be for the Texans this Sunday. Uh, are we blessing or stressing the fact that we're playing a desperate Jags team who's 0-3? Uh, you have one side where they're 0-3. You could say that they're bad, so we're playing a bad team. But on the flip side, you have a team that's up against the ropes. Um, I'm going to say I'm mildly stressing. Uh, you know, I, I think we'll fare well, but it's a divisional game. It's already something to where, you know, things can weird things can happen. You, you know your opponent from playing them twice a year. Um, and, and I'm kind of concerned, too. Like, I think we'll win, and we should win. 
But I know like the temperature from a lot of fans this week is after watching that Monday night game, their expectations are if we don't blow them out, then we aren't good. That's not the case. So that's a big reason why I'm stressing. Yeah, I'm not I'm not going to stress this because of the fact that Jacksonville and no matter who you would play, I wouldn't want to play Buffalo this week playing as bad as they played last week. But if I'm playing Jacksonville, whether I beat them by 40 or beat them by four, I just need to know that they're better on the offensive line. I need to know that there is more continuity on both sides of the ball. I need to know that some of the the, the most no, glaring, noticeable things that we saw that were negatives with this team are cleaned up. And against a team like Jacksonville, I'll take it because they don't look like a very talented team. They don't look like the team that a lot of people thought they were going to be going into the season. But my main and first focus concern is going to be on the Texans cleaning up their messes. And if they clean up their messes, then I'm not going to be stressing because I think that they're going to be fine. A361 says, y'all sound like a bunch of bad words. Stop being scared. Uh, I'm uh, <laughs> I'm blessing this one. Uh, there's three 0-3 teams in the NFL. One of them's the Jags. Yes, give me bad teams. Let me play bad teams, especially after a loss. I'll agree with you that I don't think this is going to be like a layup. I agree with you that divisional games are going to be kind of gritty. They're going to be kind of tough. They're usually going to be closer than what you think. Uh, I haven't seen the spread on this one this week, so I don't even know how I feel about the Texans against the spread. Seven. Like, do I think Jacksonville could cover that number? Yeah, I think they could cover that number. I think it's hard to cover big numbers against divisional opponents. So I agree with that logic of it, but coming off a loss – Playing a team that hasn't won a game in the NFL, yes, they'll be desperate, but I think they're more bad than they are more desperate. Uh, I'm I'm a blessing that they have the Jags coming up this weekend. Love it. Uh, so this next one is coming from my wife, Anita. Shout, oh. out, shout out, Anita. Love you, babe. Um, Mrs. And this Mrs. Will, Stressen. Mrs. Stressen, that is right. This, this will be uh, <laughs> actually her perspective on it. She wants to know, are we blessing or stressing C.J. Stroud's pregame outfits? And she says no. that she is stressing. I am holding back judgment because my sense of fashion is terrible, but I will defer to my wife. So if she's stressing, then I'm stressing. Did she say that she's ever worn the same outfit? I think if not something eerily similar. For yeah. Sure. Cause Jeremy pointed this out previously and I wasn't aware. And then when I was made aware and saw the video and the pictures, I was like, yikes. Uh, yeah. I, you know, fashion these days, it, you know, people would be critical of me every day because I wear quote unquote gym clothes, but yeah, that's a tough look. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I'm blessing this one. I, I am. I'm an old man that wears hats and t-shirts to work. Blankers, you know, he's always wearing. St- he's ready for a pickup game at any time. We can't be commenting on players that are in their 20s and what they wear. Uh, so I, I take myself out of this conversation. If C.J. Stroud feels good, hope he plays good, looks good, all of that. So yeah, I'm a. Uh, I'm blessing what C.J. Stroud's wearing on uh, on game days. Uh, Garrett from Houston Stressens. You can find him on Twitter at Texans Commenter. Look anywhere on social media and you see if you're blessing or stressing. We'll do it again next week, Garrett. Appreciate you. I yeah, appreciate you guys. All right. Coming up next, Mike Greenberg will be joining us when we return. It is the Bees on ESPN 97.5 and ESPN 92.5. We got a big 